interest me. Quite often developer-ish focused and this episode today is one of those and I spend live about 45 minutes to 60 minutes seeing how I get on with it and then about a week later I release an edited version of that to YouTube. So I just put out the video from last week which was with Caden Live, a video editing tool so slightly different. If you like what you see here today you can find more at chrisandchiller.com. Video today this is actually something I'm super excited to try because anyone who's ever watched any of my videos before knows I'm quite into um, static site generators, text editors and sorts of related tooling. And I've tried quite a few headless CMS in the past um, and always had sort of mixed success with them for various reasons. And some of that has been that it didn't necessarily suit the workflow that I was particularly happy with or often actually the the end content delivery experience was what was a problem. Um, there's a whole bunch of things. You can find them on the channel, but generally they've disappointed me. And I come from a traditional CMS background. I actually used to contribute to Drupal. Uh, I've also worked for Headless CMS Company as well. But uh, anyway, I digress. Someone told me about front matter. Not front matter in uh, YAML blocks at the top of a markdown file, but a headless CMS that runs in Visual Studio Code called front matter. Now this to me sounded fantastic. So I am looking forward to trying this. Let's jump in. I'm assuming we're going to need VS Code at some point, so we'll come to that in a minute. Let's have a quick look around the web page first. So it looks like it's entirely open source, I think, because I can see sponsor up here. I don't think it's a commercial product, which is also sort of encouraging. Um, this looks quite cool here. I'll come to that in a minute. It kind of looks to me like it's basically maybe a nice VS Code GUI on the front matter, but that's okay. Um, it's an extension. A CMS that loves any static site generator. I don't think it, I get the impression it's not going to directly integrate with any of them, but more, yeah, sit on top of the, the markdown. Um, pick, but it says pick your generator, which is interesting. I don't know if we actually need to. We'll come to that in a minute. Uh, why would you leave your editor? Fine. Managing your media. Ooh, pretty cool. Features. 100% secure. I mean, is it just on your local machine, I assume, but anyway. Content types, defining content types. Interesting. Preview, content media dashboard, SEO checks. Ooh. And yeah, we can see some of the other things here. So I am not 100% sure what we're gonna to need to do here. So I'm just gonna to go to, um, all right, the VS Code Marketplace front matter. I think we can just do this. Uh, I keep seeing these blue ticks and I don't really know what they mean. I need to check that out. Our publisher has verified. Huh. I wonder if I've uh, verified myself. Seemingly not. <laughs> I'm not sure how you verify yourself, but anyway, I digress. Where were we? Front matter. So we have an official extension. We have a beta version. It also looks like there's, I think these are nothing to do with it. I think these are separate things, but yeah. So this is the one we want. We can just close that for now. I don't think this is gonna tell us anything different that we don't already see from the web page. Yeah. Very good documentation. Uh, yeah. I think we get the idea. So let's install. I think we're going to need to actually switch to a proper static site here. So I am going to open my Jekyll website. It's also got a fair bit of customization in it so we can see how Frontmatter copes with it. Open the dashboard. Actually, this is pretty nice. There's a lot of nice interface here. I kind of, there's a lot to look at here, but start by clicking on this action. Project initialize successfully. Cool. 
select your... Uh, let's get this out of the way. There's quite a lot of options here. Oh, now that's interesting. It said Jekyll on the front page, but now I'm not seeing it. Uh, I get the increasing feeling that Jekyll is less supported <laughs> on various things, but um, I haven't really had the time to switch <laughs> yet. It says it here, but um, nothing there. Doesn't even seem to be anything in docs, which is odd. Is it going to work or should we use something different? Don't know. It's mentioned that it supports it, but I see nothing explicit telling us what to do. So for now, I could switch to a Hugo project, initialize the project. It's Hugo. Don't appear to be able to click that. Register content folders, manual action. Register your content folder. You can perform this action by right clicking on the folder in the Explorer view. That's pretty cool. This one. Uh, register folder. Show the dashboard. Click on this action. Don't appear to be able to. Weird, I could click on those ones, but not anything else. <laughs> it's a shame. I do not appear to be able to get this to finish. Um, click on this action to load the dashboard. Doesn't seem to work. Oh. That was odd. I just did that again and it did work. So now what? Content creation, I guess. Let's have a quick look over here whilst, before we do that, I'm gonna switch that to the list. Yeah, so here is the content we have here, the titles, I guess. I don't know if we can change what's viewed here. I don't know. Open on startup, there's a search. There's media. Yeah, there's not that much on this web page, but there's some there. I don't know what to uh, edit metadata, copy the media path, edit the metadata. I wonder what that's gonna do. Snippets. I don't really have any snippets, but I don't know what that means. Yeah, what do we do with that? Predefined chunk of code or text that can be used to insert your content. I think they're only related to front matter though. I think I wanted to look at the media location. How can we set that up to be the right place? Don't really know where I'm supposed to put that. It feels really like something you would want, but I'm not seeing a setting to, to change to set that manually. You can add an image from the shortcuts up here. And just click that. Yep. We can also add these snippets, which end up basically being kind of reusable pieces of content that you use a lot. Maybe in different static site options, it gives you different um, possibilities. There's this, yeah, quite quite nice. It, there are other extensions that give this kind of markdown shortcuts up here, but that's actually quite cool. Uh, that Yeah, that does the same thing effectively. Uh, what's that one do? Uh, list. So this is actually quite, quite nice. <laughs> it takes you back to the dashboard. Oops, I seem to have. Yep. Um, I have been very intrigued by this button here. Writing settings. Ooh. Not quite sure what that did, <laughs> but it does look nicer. I want to know what that just did. And I'd like to change them because I wouldn't mind line numbers, but the rendering of the font has definitely improved. Behind, okay, I'd like to look at this. I wonder if we can look at this file. There's also data. This is the data files that you get in a lot of static site generators. I might actually try doing this manually in Jekyll now because um, I have data files in this project. So we need to register the content folder. I have a lot of content. <laughs> Uh, I mean, actually I have several content folders, but let's just go for posts for now. And this is going to be, probably be quite slow. <laughs> actually not terrible. I don't think there's anything in draft. No. Media. That is not the case. That's not the correct folder. I guess we could configure it. Snippets. I won't have any, obviously. Data. In assuming it should just be adding a folder. Yeah. Configure the extension with the following settings, but I'd rather like to use the ones I have already. So yeah, you 
So you still have to set all the properties manually, which is interesting. Okay. What matter dot data. Define that all files of a folder need to be treated the same on the types. I'm slightly confused as to how to set this up best. I'm wondering what this one means, the data types. This only defines the object and its fields. Use this setting if you want to reuse a data type in various files or folders. I'm just gonna use one for now. I'm not 100% sure what the best option here is. And we'll make a new entry. Let's just go for this favorite posts one. I guess I was kind of hoping that it would pick it up automatically. We'll keep this very simple for now because otherwise, be here for a long time just writing JSON. Now does this match the field in the JSON file or does it match what you want to call it? I'm a little unclear on this feature to be honest with you. I'm also not sure if this is actually meant to load or if it's just going to create, but you get the idea here. I think maybe a better thing to try would be um, just making something new, because then we can test it at least. So if we do post.json. So that works because we just kept it simple. I'm not 100% sure if you can actually reference a pre-existing file or not. So there are content types here. Can also define content types in each static site generator. So it's a shame it doesn't pick up on those. Maybe it does, uh, it could be worth seeing. Uh, although I don't have any defined in Hugo, I have loads defined in Jekyll. I mean, this is a lot of configuration needed, um, if that's the case. Yeah, so you need to add it manually, which is kind of a pain. I'm kind of unsure because I like what I'm getting here, but there's a lot of configuration I need to do, which is fine. But especially with this site where I have a lot of custom content types, I need to do a lot of underpinning there to get the content type to work and all those sorts of things. Um, I'm assuming I could just, um, if you're starting from scratch, then it's kind of easier, I guess. I'm assuming I could do that. I wouldn't mind just going through the process so I get the different buttons on the dashboard, basically. Content types, uh, let's do event, uh, and it'd be date, which I think in JSON can only be a string. The example in the docs are incorrect, potentially. An array of objects, yes. This is where my JSON gets befuddled like that. <gasps> oh, yes, that'll do. <laughs> I think that's it. So should, I don't know if we have to reload or anything like that. Oh, I can still see some problems. Type, ah, okay. Type string, title, title. Well, I wonder what other types are available. I'm just out of interest because that would be cool. Um, the ability to have like a date picker here and stuff like that would be cool. Let's see what that looks like. Obviously this doesn't match the, <laughs> I don't think it's picked it up yet. Let's uh, reload that again. I was expecting to see like a, a new button for creating a different type of content type, but I'm not seeing what I'd expect to see. Available content types. I'm not seeing that content type though. Oh, well that's, maybe if you add one, you need to do both because now we're seeing the date picker here. Yeah. yeah. So potentially if you add something, you override the default as well maybe, which is tricky, good to know, but yeah. So it's starting to make a sort of a sense. There's a lot here, but sort of lots of configurations required, which I guess is the disadvantage of using something like a, a SaaS, from using something like a SaaS service. Um, there's 
some of the convenience features I could see that if I was starting from scratch, I would find quite useful and I would set this up with my new project. So I'm actually thinking of migrating this website from Jekyll and that might be a time to do something like this. But when you already have a pre-existing site and you have to basically recreate everything, that's a bit of a pain. Um, I don't know if it automatically picks up content types from the frameworks it recognizes, but it doesn't look like it does. Um, that's probably one of the things that annoys me the most is that to get become useful, I have to do a lot of configuration. It would also be interesting just to try something that isn't part of a static site generator. I have a few writing files where I tend to also use. So this is not part of any static site generator. So this is, yeah, so this is the other way you could create um, content types actually from a template instead. This is probably easier in some respects than using the JSON because then at least you could just copy paste from various other places. Like for example, Jekyll does have, or say for example, I wanted to create a template of an event. I could go into an event, copy this, blank it out, use the defaults, for example. Um, so that's kind of what we're getting there. Um, this kind of gives me some advantages over using other sorts of markdown tools like um, Ulysses or something, because they get dates and this kind of, this, yeah, this CMS style of having a repository for my images and snippets and things like that. Um, so there are some ideas there. So there's a whole bunch of bits and pieces that I really like the look of, but I am still trying to figure out how how I would go about and when I would go about setting it all up to make the biggest advantage from it. I think it's another one of those extensions like GitHub Copilot that I'm not completely sold on, but I'll probably leave it enabled just to kind of get a feel for it and build up with it over time and see how I go with it. Um, also not really sure if I'd call it a headless CMS because it doesn't really do any of the delivery stuff that's still lent on by the static site generator. It's basically just a WYSIWYG to your content is in my mind more what it is, but I suppose that sounds a front end to your content. I don't know, it doesn't sound so bad as a, as a term to use to me, but yeah, that's that's kind of my one figuring is like quite what it says it is, but it still has some use. So mixed opinions there. I'm going to keep it enabled, keep experimenting and add it to a few projects as I go and, and, and see how it goes for me and see what else I learn over time. Maybe I'll do a second video when I've trained it a bit more. But yeah, for now, I'm uncertain, but there's a lot of promise. So I think that's my, my summary. So if you enjoyed this video, you can find more at chrisjilla.com as always, where if you happen to watch, then subscribe, leave a comment, say hi. Always nice to hear from you. Until next time i'll be back with another hands-on next week so until then thank you very much for joining me everybody